everyone and welcome to Math Sucks. This video is going to help you pass the Geometry Common Core Regents. We're doing this one question at a time. Here is part two with question 25. In the diagram below, quadrilateral BCDE maps onto quadrilateral JKLM using a sequence of rigid motions. So looking at this, we're saying BCDE maps onto JKLM using a sequence of rigid motions. Determine and state the degree measure of angle D. So we're trying to find this value here. So if we know that they, this has a sequence of rigid motions, we know that the angles are going to be congruent to each other if this maps directly onto that. So we just need to figure out what angles line up with this shape from this shape to this shape. So here we have 91 degrees already, and now we need to bring over 117 and a 70 degrees. So notice J maps up with angle B, so we could put in 117 degrees here. And then this angle K maps up with angle C, so that we could put 70 degrees here. And you could either figure this out visually and see like the, this little point matches this little point, or you can actually look at uh, the order of the angle, so B to J. So we know B and J correspond with each other, and then K and C, C and K come next in that order. So that's how we know that these correspond with each other, even if you can't uh, notice it visually, which is okay. So now the next thing we need to do is actually find the angle measure of angle D. And the trick here is that their interior angles all add up to 360 degrees. So we could just take 360 degrees and subtract uh, 70 plus 117 plus 91, all the angles you already have. Plug this in your calculator and we get 82 degrees. And that's our answer. Question 26. Given AB below, use a compass and a straight edge to construct a segment that is one fourth AB. So for this kind of question, we're going to need to cut AB, the line segment they give us, in half. And then what we're going to have to do is cut that again in half to find the quarter. So let's do this one step at a time. So first, let's take our compass, bring it to point B, and we're going to make an arc above and below our line segment. And then we're going to keep the same distance on the compass, bring it to point A, and then swing above and below. So notice these arcs intersect at this point, and that's when we're going to take our straight edge and make a line between the two, connecting the two points. So now we've cut this line in half, and now let's cut it in half one more time. This time, instead of between, we're going to do the same thing, but instead of between A and B, we're going to do this between this point and B. So I'm going to take the compass, make it a little smaller, and do the same thing. So I'll make an arc above the line and below the line. And then we'll take the same distance of the compass, bring it to this point that we just made, make an arc above the line and below the line. And now we're going to do the same thing, connect those points of intersection. And now we have cut our line into a quarter of AB. Yeah, so constructions are easy as long as you know the steps and what to do. So please practice them. I have a whole playlist on a bunch of different constructions, so please check that out. Question 27. A dog sees a bird in a tree. The angle of elevation from the dog's eye to the bird is 36 degrees, as modeled below. Dog is 18 and a half feet away from the base of the tree. Let me write that down because they don't have that here. So 18 and a half. So the dog is 18 and a half feet away from the tree. And his eyes are two and a half feet above the ground. Determine and state how high the bird is above the ground to the nearest foot. So this is two and a half feet, but this base here of this triangle is 18 and a half feet. And they want to know how high the bird is above the ground. So they want to know this value here. So let's, let's uh, redraw this right triangle down here. So we have a right triangle and this angle measure is 36 degrees. We want to know the value of this and we know that this is 18.5 feet at the base. So in relation to this angle, we have the value of the, of the opposite, which is what we're looking for. So we actually don't have this value, but that's what we're looking for. And then we also have the adjacent. So if we write out Sokotoa, 
we are looking for the opposite and we have the adjacent. So we know we're going to be using tan. So we're going to do tan of our angle, 36 degrees, is equal to the opposite, x over the adjacent, 18.5. And all we need to do is a little cross multiply. So 18.5. And we could just plug this in our calculator. we get 13.44103677. So before we say this is our answer, remember uh, we wanted to know how high the bird is above the ground. So how high the bird is above the ground. So that's what we just answered is just this part, right? So this distance right here is 13.44103677. But don't forget that down here that the, the dog is two and a half feet above the ground. So we didn't count this part. So we're going to add this. We're going to add 2.5 feet to the answer we just found. And we're going to get 15.941. And when you look back, it's one to the nearest foot. So we can say this, the bird is 16 feet high. And that's our answer. Question 28. Pure silver has a density of 10 and a half grams per centimeter cubed. Samantha has a pure silver charm on her necklace in the shape of a sphere. The radius of the charm is half a centimeter. Determine and state the mass of the charm to the nearest tenth of a gram. So if we're finding the mass, we're going to be finding the volume of the sphere first and then converting it into unit here, grams. So let's first draw out our sphere. This is a charm. And the radius is 0.5 centimeters. And the volume for a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So we have 4 thirds pi 0.5 cubed. So we plug that in our calculator. Let's see what we get. We get this long decimal here. So we got this number 0.523 five nine eight seven seven five six and remember that this is in centimeters cubed they don't want it in centimeters though they want the mass of the charm to the ten nearest tenth of a gram so what we're going to do is use this conversion rate up here with the density so we're going to take the number we just found and convert it to grams so we're going to multiply it by 10.5 grams per centimeters cubed so you can see how the, you know we're gonna multiply it because you see how our units are gonna cancel each other out. So we'll be left with grams. We're gonna just take this number, multiply it times 10.5, and we get this. And we want it to the, they want it to the nearest tenth. So this is gonna be 5.5 grams. And that's our answer. Question 29. In triangle ABC below, DE is drawn such that AD is equal to 4, and I have this written out for us, DB is equal to 8, AE is 3, and EC is 6. Explain why triangle ADE, so this little triangle here, triangle ADE, is similar to triangle ABC, ABC, the bigger triangle. So since the sides of each triangle are in proportion, right, 3, so if we have, let me draw out each triangle separately. So we have triangle A, D, E, this is three, this is four. And then we have the bigger triangle where this entire length here is nine and this entire length here is 12. So since the sides are in proportion, notice we're multiplying times three. Three times three is nine and four times three is 12. So we know the sides are in proportion and therefore these triangles are similar to each other. But we need more of an explanation of that. So we can actually talk about the side splitter theorem. And what this says is if a line is parallel to one side of a triangle and intersects the other two sides, then it divides these two sides proportionally. And you can see that that's exactly what's happening here. Here we have three and then this is six. So we're we're saying that this line ED is parallel to CB based on the side splitter theorem because this is doubling three to six and four to eight. So based on the side splitter theorem, so 
So we're saying these two sides are divided proportionally. 3 to 6, 3 times 2 is 6, 4 to 8, 4 times 2 is 8. Based on the side splitter theorem, that means these are parallel to each other. ED is parallel to CB. And because of that, we can actually infer that these two triangles are similar by angle angle. So right, they share this angle A, of course, but then because these are parallel, the side lengths of the triangle act as a transversal, cutting into parallel lines, forming these angle relationships. So angle E is congruent to angle C, and angle B is congruent to angle D. So triangle ADE is similar to triangle ABC based based on angle angle because of sharing angle A and corresponding angles. Question number 30. In circle E below, tangent PA and secant PBC are drawn. If PB is equal to 9 and BC is equal to 16, determinants think the length of PA. So we're trying to find PA over here. So we have a tangent and a secant. So we're going to use an intersecting secant tangent theorem. So what that states here is that uh, x squared or pa squared is going to be equal to pb times pc. So this small part pb times the entire length of pc. pa this tangent length is going to be equal to PB, which is 9, times PC, which is 16 plus 9. So we get 225 is equal to X squared. Take the square root of both sides. And we get X is equal to 15. So PA is equal to 15. Question 31. In a right triangle, sine of 4x plus 3 degrees is equal to cosine of 2x minus 9 degrees. Determine and state the value of x. So here we're working with complementary angle theorem. If two angles add to 90 degrees, the sine of one angle is equal to the cosine of the other. So in other words, so looking at this problem, they're already telling us that they're equal. So the sine of one angle is equal to the cosine of this angle. So that means we know that they're going to add to 90 degrees when we add them all together. Since these are cofunctions, sine and cosine are equal to each other. They are angle values are complementary and add to 90 degrees means we can take both angle values, add them together, and set them equal to 90 degrees to find the value for x. So we're just going to take what's in here. So we have 4x plus 3 from sine plus 2x minus 9 from cosine, and we're setting equal to 90 degrees. And then we should just combine like terms. We have 4x plus 2x. And we get x is equal to 16 degrees. So this is the end of part two. Look out for part three coming out soon. Please let me know if you have any questions below. Good luck and happy calculating.